Anything Cricket, Let's Talk is brought to you by Rascals Barbados, My Kind of Beauty, and the Calvary Institute. Rascals Barbados, let us serve you in a relaxed atmosphere with complimentary Wi-Fi or try a takeout meal. Rascals on the Mighty Griner Highway. Call 538-9990. <laughs> For expert tuition, call the Calvary Institute. We offer classes at primary and secondary level. Our adult programs include floral arranging, jewelry making, crochet, knitting, sewing, photography, conversational Spanish, and more. Check out our summer special in video editing. Phone 232-2109. The Calvary Institute on Woman Street. Healing nourishing, restoring, amazing products, essential to provide healthy skin, my kind of beauty, let it be yours. Welcome to Anything Cricket, Let's Talk, coming to you from the studios of the Caribbean Media Corporation, Bridgetown, Barbados. Today, I'll be joined by Wayne Holder and Martin Paris. Our special guest is Kevin Hodge. You'll hear a bit more from CWI director Enoch Lewis. All that and more when we come back on Anything Cricket, Let's Talk. Rascals Barbados. Let us serve you in a relaxed atmosphere with complimentary Wi-Fi or try a takeout meal. Rascals on the Mighty Griner Highway. Call 538-9990. Well, the World Cup is over. Congratulations to first-time champions, England. Uh, probably the best two months of my life to date. Sum up how you're feeling, how it feels to have that medal around your Probably hasn't sunken in as well. Had a bit of emotion on the field right after, but for now, I don't think it's sunken in as yet. Um, probably when you get to the dressing room with the guys jumping around, maybe, but. But now I'm just glad that they actually came out on the winning side. And the captain put a lot of faith in you to send you back out there for that final over. Yeah, um, he didn't even come to me. Like, I had to ask him if it was me that was balling it. Um, yeah, I think well, a lot of the other players told me that I, that I got this even before he came. So I think everyone was probably looking for me to, to do it anyway. And what was the atmosphere like amongst the group just after you won? It's hard to think, hard to remember. I just know that everyone was running, jumping, screaming, throwing stuff. So, <laughs> yeah, I think the the boys, the boys really, really deserved it today. You know, um, we we held in there even though probably didn't look like we were gonna win in the last two or three overs. But I'm really proud of the boys for still sticking at it. Joffrey, you've come into this team and from the outside, and you've, you've done brilliantly. You look pretty calm there under all that pressure. How big a role has Owen Morgan played in in, in helping you? Well, he was always really, really calm captain for the whole tournament. But even today, even after after they went for the six, a lot of captains probably would have had their hands on the head or pacing up and down or head down. But he, he never dropped. He never he never did anything bad. Um, I think he was even more more comforting after that, which is what you need, especially with the task so so nervy. Um, a lot was on, well, a lot was on the line, and sometimes emotions can can come into it. But he was calm, worked through it. 
I mean, four years in the making, can you sum up what this means to you and to English cricket? To me and to the team and everybody who's been involved over the last four years, it, it means absolutely everything. Uh, and the planning, the hard work, the dedication, the commitment, and the little bit of luck today really did get us over the line. It's been an absolutely incredible journey um, to everybody around the country and around the world who, who has followed us and supported us. Thank you so much. It, it's been phenomenal right from the very beginning of the tournament all the way through regardless of our performance people believed because we believed and i'm very thankful for that and everybody is as well what do you think what do you hope that game will have done for the legacy in terms of english cricket in this country participation i, I certainly hope participation levels go up or continue to rise um, i think that i think the nature in which the game was played today was absolutely outstanding I uh, commend the Black Caps and Kane. Uh, they've been absolutely incredible, hugely admirable team, the spirit, the way they play, the fight they show, uh, and the fact that they've done it for an extremely long time. Um, we're only newcomers to this, and we want to be as consistent as them come the next World Cup with aspirations like that. But to get over the line reaffirms everything that we've done over the last 14, four years and justifies it as well. Did you feel quite emotional? I did earlier, yes. I did. I still can't quite believe. That's why I'm carrying it around as much as I can. I can't quite believe that we've got over the line. It's, it's been an extraordinary day. Uh, you guys watching, uh, like, the most incredible game of cricket with nothing between the sides. So, uh, you know, sport sometimes is very, very fine margins. I think it was the finest of margins today. And it could have gone either way, but I'm, I'm thankful it went ours. Wayne, it has been six weeks of compelling action. What are your takeaways? Preparation, preparation, preparation. We have noticed that the teams who were prepared, and let's use England as an example, their planning started as soon as the 2015 tournament was completed and we can see how they have benefited from that so I'm saying again preparation 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 well I suppose in the case of New Zealand you'll have to say consistency and uh, again um, showing that even although they're not the a Cinderella team so to speak a team that has performed consistently well in this particular global competition for the West Indies, the rebuilding process has to start right now. I think priority number one is to improve our ranking and get back into a position where we would not have to endure the ignominy of having to qualify for a World Cup. And I can tell you that my takeaway, and it's all part of what you're talking about preparation, I believe that the secret to the West Indies returning to a competitive force in ODI cricket is to build the ODI side around the nucleus of the test team. I think the policy of what people call bits and pieces cricketer has not worked. The policy of, the, of packing the side with power hitters has been a failure. And I believe we have to get our best batsmen and our best bowlers as the nucleus of the one international side moving forward. Although I would suggest there is a place in ODI cricket for the so-called T20 specialist and those bits and pieces that you speak of. I think we here in the West Indies have taken it a bit too far and the, the too much emphasis on those, those players rather than looking to get the mix just right with the inclusion of those steadier players uh, who would have had their grounding in the longer version. I agree with you. I'm not suggesting that we totally eliminate the power hitters, but uh, I, I really don't think that you need more than one or two in any given 11. If you look at the just completed World Cup, if you would use players 
like Craig Braffitt, for example, and I'm going to go to the extreme because he's probably um, one of the more, one of the slowest scoring players, slowest um, strike rate among our, our test players. The scores that we were chasing that beat us win could have been achieved with a, a Craig Baffert approach and mentality. We weren't giving up scores of 350 and 375 and 400. We were beaten chasing scores under 300. We were normal batting and rotating the strike would have been most likely effective. And what I would have observed, you know, you, you talk of power hitters, but the most successful batsmen uh, in the 2019 tournament were these stroke players at the top of the order. Aggressive, yes, but stroke players and uh, batsmen who depend on technical skills more so than power. And so even the Craig Braffitt type player, though he has a part, again, you don't want to go that far west to have too many of those players. Oh, no, you, you certainly don't need too many. I'm yeah. taking a long and I'm not even suggesting that Craig Braffitt has to play. I know, it's, it's but I'm saying that in the context of the World Cup that has just been completed, he would not have been a liability in the side. I'm talking about mm -hmm. the type player, yes, mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm, I'm going down the lines of the Virat Kohli. Mm -hmm. He's not a batsman who's a power hitter, but you can't keep him quiet either. Mm -hmm. Oh, and another area that I think West Indies uh, would need to improve vastly in, running between the wickets, mm -hmm. the importance of running, running the ones, running the twos, running the threes, rather than sitting back and concentrating on the big boundaries, the fours and the sixes. And as we look forward to the next World Cup win, I think a word for those who are the decision makers. We've got to have confidence in our best players and give them time to adapt. I, I think it's fairly pointless putting um, a Ross and Chase, for example, in a one day international side, and if he doesn't get a big score after three or four games, you drop him. Is Ross and Chase one of the leading batsmen in the West Indies, or isn't he? If he is, he will adapt to the one day international format. You've just got to give him time. Agreed. Rascals Barbados, let us serve you in a relaxed atmosphere with complimentary Wi-Fi or try a takeout meal. Rascals on the mighty Griner Highway. Call 538-9990. We have the pleasure of welcoming Kevin Hodge to Anything Cricket, Let's Talk. Welcome, Kevin. Thank you very much. For those who don't really know, Kevin and I go back to a brief stint in my career when I was a cricket umpire, and he was here for the West Indies under 19, and we've kept in contact ever since then, and I've noted his progress, and I'm proud to say you've been doing a good job. <laughs> Thank you very much. Wayne, I'm sure you've been following him as well, and you'd love to grill him with a few questions for anything cricket let's talk well not, there's not no grilling involved here whatsoever i would like to uh, uh, congratulate uh, kevin on the advances that he has made in his career uh, we all know he's now an established first class player with the windward islands volcanoes he's also had experience with the west indies representative sides at the various age group levels and also at the 18 level, and uh, and then uh, um, the before that with the CCC uh, in, in regional competition. So here's congratulating him on, on on those advances that he has made in his cricketing career, which seems to be going from strength to strength. Yeah, Kevin, and uh, partly if if we delve into your last season, can you tell us about some of the performances yeah. that you managed to accomplish? last season? Uh, just a, a few of them would probably be you know, the five half centuries that I scored. Um, it's just unfortunate that um, you know, my conversion was not where I wanted it to be. So obviously, you know, a, lot of people, a lot of batsmen score half centuries, but obviously to separate um, you know, the top players from the ordinary, you want to score centuries. Um, so obviously, you know, moving on to next season, that's something that I'm looking to, you know, to improve on. Uh, also, 
uh, taking 30 wickets, um, which is which was the, the second most for the Volcanoes, uh, was a big achievement for me. Uh, it was uh, really unfortunate that Shane got um, banned halfway through the season. So it really meant that I had to step up with the ball, and you know I was quite satisfied with what I was able to achieve. Well, because I was hearing you talking about your batting exploits, but we know that you have the all-round ability with the slow bowling, and you're not a slouch in the field either. Yeah, fielding is something that I really enjoy. Um, so the last season, I really took um, I took to the gully position, and you know, I tried my best to make it my own. So uh, it worked out pretty well. I took most of the catches that, that came there. So I you know, just look to improve there and, and help out as much as I can in the outfield. And Wayne was telling me that you just recently returned from a West Indies training camp. Yeah, it was a high performance camp, basically, with the coaches. Around. It was held by some of the top coaches in the Caribbean. So um, there was a coach for each aspect. Uh, so we had Andre Coley was the fielding coach, Andrew Richardson was the bowling coach, and Graham West and Crandon was dealing with the batting, and then we had um, Gregory Seal who was dealing with the strength and conditioning aspect of the, the coaching. Well, you don't look much worn out from a, a camp that seemed to be very comprehensive. Uh, how was it really? You told me about the aspects, but what um, was it like? It, I'm, well, to be honest, I've been back a couple of weeks now, but it was really intense. Um, they really tried to, you know, work on a lot of specific stuff um, within those two weeks. But basically, it was just to get a general idea of where we are, our strengths, our weaknesses. Um, before the camps actually started, we had a one-to-one -one with each of the coaches, you know, just trying to figure out, you know, where we are, what we consider our strengths, our weaknesses, and, you know, what are the ways or what are the objectives we look to achieve uh, during the camp. And then they just worked around that. And, you know, we had a couple of tests, you know, as the, as the camp went along. And then we had a couple of review sessions and stuff like that. But it was really good. Um, for me personally, uh, I didn't go into the camp uh, with a specific goal saying, hey, I want to, you know, be able to hit the ball like this or do this with the ball or stuff like that. Uh, for me, it was just about adding knowledge, general knowledge to what um, I already know. Um, which includes all you know three facets of the game bowling batting fielding uh, just to improve my overall game um, and it worked really well you know I, I got a lot of information uh, in the fielding in my bowling so, subtle variations and you know ways that i can improve my physical um, condition you know when it comes to strength and conditioning so you know i walked away for a lot and as far as the various formats are concerned was there any concentration though on uh, Exploiting your skills for the for the differing formats, so it was just a general uh, a cricket coaching setup. No, I think it was focused more on red ball cricket. Um, I think previously there was a there was a camp for the emerging players that are going off to the CPL, um, so that was focused around white ball. But this camp was generally a red ball camp, you know, and longer version of the game. In talking about um, the, the, uh, the different formats, though, uh, your exploits would suggest that you obviously but regard yourself as an all-formats player. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, I think what I do, you know, bowling and batting, you know, it, it, um, I fall easy to, easily into each of these aspects. Um, but generally, you know, I prefer uh, the longer version because I believe, you know, that's where, you know, you really test your skills mentally, physically, um, technique. And because if you look at international cricket, all the, the great T20 players, um, 50 over players, they're exceptional in test cricket so uh, for me that's you know where i look to make my aim but you know wherever that i start you know i'll accept gladly but we've also seen the emergence of a number of young talented cricketers uh, through the, the the medium of the t20 do you think that uh, it is the, the perfect training ground though for uh, for young players um i think to be honest anywhere that they can get a start into international cricket would be you know beneficial but I, what i realized a lot of the international teams that they're blooding their young players you know f from the shorter version into the longer version because i guess you know they don't want to just throw them into the deep end you know without having a taste of what international cricket so most of the guys you know have a taste of t20 cricket um then 50 over and then you know the really good ones you know filter into test cricket so I guess there are various ways of doing it, but you know that's the format most of the teams are using. And the skills employed, uh, what are the differences though that you find? I guess in the longer version of the game, you look to spin the ball a lot more. Mm -hmm. You look to 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 be a more attacking. Mm -hmm. um, and 
in the T20 and the one day game. I'm just imagining yeah. that you may want to be a bit tighter mm -hmm. uh, than than you would be uh, to to be to be more economical. Let's right. put it that way. Yeah. Um, what are the different skills uh, you would need to employ? I think in in the longer version, you have a bit more time. Um, you can work out batsmen and you know play mind games. Um, you know, figure out, you know, what are they strong at, what are they weak at, and, you know, spend time working away at your craft. Um, like I said, spinning the ball is, is a, a very um, important thing to do. Whereas in T20 cricket, you more, you know, you try to be tight. You try to outthink the batsman uh, one step ahead. Whereas in, you know, red ball cricket, you know, you can be a bit more relaxed, you know, be a bit more um, reactive. But in white ball cricket, you have to be proactive. You say, all right. Um, this is what he's looking to do, all right? I'm going to try and do this instead, or you know, limit his scoring from there. And just try and create pressure. I think it's all about creating pressure and keeping it simple, because you don't want to overcomplicate things. So you keep it simple, create pressure, and then, you know, hopefully the basketball makes a mistake. And you have also been one of these spinners who, who has been trusted mm -hmm. with the new ball quite a lot. The uh, spin bowling uh, and, and the new ball is becoming a feature uh, of cricket nowadays. Uh, have you specifically um, set out to, to develop your game around uh, bowling the, the new ball? Uh, no, actually. Um, I think we were just at practice one day for, for you a couple of years ago, and you know, Floyd just decided, you know, all right, OG, um, you know, take up this new ball and just, you know, bowl, just to bowl wicket to wicket. Um, just don't leave the stump. But, uh, you know, in doing that, obviously, I developed um, holding the ball in a certain way that it would swing when I release it. So I just kept practicing that, and then, you know, it, it fell out well for the team. So it's just something that I kept on doing. And uh, so it, you know, moved on into the CPL. It's something that, you know, worked well for me. Yeah. How much of an impact and influence has Floyd Reefer, the current West Indies coach, mm -hmm. been on your progress and career? Uh, he's had a, a major influence. Um, I think he's a person that um, instills confidence into you. Um, you know, I think he, he plays a lot of emphasis on the mental aspect of the game. Um, coming to you, I had a lot of, of talent. But obviously, that's one thing. Um, but I wasn't you know, transforming you know, that talent into good performances. So you know, he recommended you know, hey, reading some books, um, you know, being confident, stuff like that. You know, find, motivating yourself. And that's something he does really well. You know, he finds a way to motivate players, you know, get inside their head and say, hey, come on, you know, you should try this and, you know, work at this. And, you know, it's something that I took to, you know, reading a lot of books and... Um, Stick a pin. You mean you weren't in a net, you weren't on the field, you actually did theoretical stuff, reading books about cricket? Yeah, not only, not only about cricket, but um, about the mental aspect of the game, you know, mental toughness, mental strength, you know, motivation, you know, getting through tough situations. So, it, yeah, I, I spent a lot of time in the nets, um, bowling, batting and stuff, and also feeling in the outfield, but I think I got that edge, um, you know, paying a lot of attention to the mental aspect of it. I'm going to ask the question, which came first, the studying or the cricket? <laughs> um, I think it was it was a balance. Um, it, it it was a tough balance to be honest. Obviously, the schedule you know is always something that is something you have to pay a lot of attention to. So, for example, my my daily routine or schedule would be like we would have six gym sets, six thirty in the morning or seven. I'm a morning person, so my gym sessions would be fairly early, and then from like ten o'clock we would have. Um, team sessions, 10 to like 12 team sessions, batting, bowling, fielding. And then most of my classes would be scheduled in the evening time. So obviously, you know, you have to make time to, you know, prepare and then get to class. And then, you know, in the evening you have studies, uh, and prepare for exams like any other student. But um, I think, to be honest, cricket took a lot of time, but obviously you had to make time for, for studies. And then obviously on weekends you had cricket. So yeah, like I said, cricket takes a lot of time, but obviously you have to be aware that, you know, hey, and also, as a student athlete, we have to maintain a certain GPA. So if we fall below that, then you know you, you run the risk of being evicted and stuff like that. You know, so you have to maintain uh, the grade point average that is required. So, like I said, you still have to put in the work um, at school. And what is your course of study? Uh, kinesiology, sports uh, science. Uh, well, yes, uh, could you um, be a bit more <laughs> explanatory for, 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 for the average layman like myself? Yeah, um, so it's basically um, the study of the, the body, um, human movement, um, but the degree itself entails uh, a lot of different specifics uh, such as um, 
um, nutrition, um, human physiology, uh, anatomy. And it also goes into the business aspect of um, sports marketing, sports management, and also sports psychology. So it's, it's basically a, a broad, you know, and it's all focused around sport. The, the degrees focus around sport. So um, a lot of the stuff that I did in the classroom, for example, like um, strength and conditioning, um, and human physiology, I could, and also nutrition, I could filter that directly into my game. You know, so I learned something in the classroom, I say, oh, this is that. And I could, you know, practice it, you know, put it into my daily habits and stuff like that. Life after cricket, mm -hmm. how important uh, do you see it as being preparing yourself for life after cricket and, um, of course, your area of study? Uh, where could you see it leading you? Yeah, that's, that's um, something that's very important. Um, I think, obviously, being at the university and balancing school and cricket at the same time, I think that's one of the things that prepare you for life after cricket. So, you know, earlier I mentioned the schedule that we had. Um, so I think, you know, obviously, you know, growing up, having your family, having your home, you have to deal with all these sort of things, you know, you know work, family, um, you have to go out, pay bills, groceries, all these sort of things. So it just, you know, it helps instill the discipline of managing your time. That's very important. Um, time management, um, being disciplined. Sometimes you might not feel to do something, but is what required at the moment. So um, obviously for me, you, using this great degree, um, I'm looking into to go into uh, strength and conditioning, you know, physiotherapy. So uh, that's what I'm looking at. Well, obviously, right now, you know, I just want to have to go out, pay bills, groceries, all these sort of things. So it just, you know, it helps instill the discipline of managing your time. That's very important. Um, time management, um, being disciplined. Sometimes you might not feel to do something, but is what required at the moment. So um, obviously, for me, you, using this great degree. Um, I'm looking into to go into uh, strength and conditioning, you know, physiotherapy. So uh, that's what I'm looking at. Well, obviously, right now, you know, I just want to, you know, get further into cricket and then, you know, see where that leads. Rascals Barbados. Let us serve you in a relaxed atmosphere with complimentary Wi-Fi or try a takeout meal. Rascals on the Mighty Griner Highway. Call 538-9990. Welcome back. Last week we had a chat with Cricket West Indies director Enoch Lewis, who is also the chair of the cricket committee. Let's have a listen as he shares a few more thoughts with us. Some time ago, I heard uh, a cricket administrator, um, a local cricket administrator, mm -hmm. um, putting forward the view that cricket now is more about being able to produce players, even if we produce players for the leagues. And personally, I found that disturbing because. I don't know if I'm just old school, but mm. I, 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 I am more excited by the idea of um, West Indies playing against England, Australia, or whoever, or, or even Barbados playing against Trinidad or something like that. Call me old fashioned. But when you talk about the, the leagues, the, the T20 leagues that are going on all over the place, um, even when the team I'm supposed to be supporting loses, by the time I get to my car, I've already gotten over that. <laughs> I mean, the leagues, the leagues are a significant threat to cricket generally, I, I, I find, because if, um, if you not have, you don't have access to your best players, it means then that if, if all the players, for argument's sake, for example, from the better players from West Indies um, run off and play all the leagues, and, and the better players from Australia do it, or the better from when, when West Indies and England meet, then, you know, the, the, the spectators are not encouraged to come and see the best players, you know, at the park. They're just not there. And so it, it affects your gate receipts. It affects the sport in terms of its overall growth because young people who want to come out and see, you know, they, they rush to superstars, you know, they want to come and see the superstars that, that, that they want to be like when they grow up. And if they're none, then they're not so encouraged to come and watch the game. So it's important that they are. There are sponsors who want their products out there as well. They want these players um, to be part of, you know, their branding and, and, and so on. So um, it, it, it is very important. And our, 
our obligation as, as um, franchises in the West Indies are to develop players firstly and, for, uh, and foremost to represent the West Indies. If, if that player finds a lucrative deal you know, somewhere across the world and can make some additional revenue, there's nothing wrong with that because our, 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 um, our various economies benefit from that because it comes back to us and families, you know, the families around you benefit and, and also the, the, the business sector because the money is spent in your economy. So there's nothing wrong with bringing in some from foreign exchange to the region. But also, we got to balance that against the fact that we need to, to ensure that cricket remains vibrant and, and a force in, in, um, in the Caribbean, a force that brings us together and, and, and as a people allow us to hold our heads high around the world. You spoke about the resources uh, of the bigger countries as against the West Indies. Um, a poor state in relation uh, to the likes of the Indias and uh, the Englands uh, and whatever. Yeah. But um, in the area of technology, I think the, the, the use of technology and analytics mm -hmm. uh, to, to prepare players, to have players, uh, to bring our players up to par, uh, let's say, with, 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 with these bigger countries. Do you see the need, first of all, uh, and do you believe that we have used uh, the technology um, to its, to, to, to its utmost? No, we, have, we certainly have not, and it's work in progress. Um, it's available, it's work in progress. Uh, firstly, you sensitize the, the players um, to, to the need for it. Um, if, you, if you're selling me something, it has to be, you know, I, I have to understand the benefits before I buy into it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they, have, they, they sell the benefits um, more and more. Um, I had a discussion recently with one of my cricket committee members, and uh, we were talking about marrying the, the, the on-field play with, with technology, the analytics, and, and, and so on, so that um, coaches and players understand the importance of it. Firstly, you got to get it to the coaches that it is critical, it's important. It plays a major role in terms of um, the development because you would find some, some coaches, uh, and, uh, you know, they, are, uh, they shy away from it. Um, it it's, it's not something that, it's something new, not something they're accustomed to, and it's something that they quite understand. And so uh, the, the, the idea is to shy away from it. But we, we're trying to form, we, we're trying to get a, a marriage where we have the coaches, maybe, you know, and the analytics people in one room, right? So we can ask questions of each other and get a better understanding and get, you know, create some synergies so that the coaches can then actually speak to the analytic people. Because in some cases, you know, some of these guys are actual scientists that, that, that actually get involved in, in dealing with these, these, these numbers. So they can have that conversation and there's a, you create some one-on-one -on -one relationship so that you can communicate. Um, you can then speak directly to a one, uh, one, on a one-on-one -on -one basis to somebody who understands it better than, than you do. And, on, and speak to the importance of it as part of the development of cricket generally in the Caribbean. Um, get especially our under 15 or under 19 or you know under 17 or 19 players accustomed to it. Get them engaged so that becomes part and parcel of their development. Uh, we we are going to be looking we are going to be looking at that because I expect this to play a more significant role as it is doing with the the other teams going forward. Thanks very much to Enoch Lewis, Cricket West Indies director and Chairman of the Committee on Cricket. Rascals Barbados, let us serve you in a relaxed atmosphere with complimentary Wi-Fi or try a takeout meal. Rascals on the mighty Griner Highway, call 538 Nine 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 zero. Healing, nourishing, restoring. Amazing products essential to provide healthy skin. My kind of beauty. Let it be yours.
That's our show. Join us again soon for another episode of Anything Cricket. Let's talk.